Hello fellow audio nerds, I'm Steph, and this is Major Hi-Fi. Sennheiser, the audio behemoth, has been making innovative audio gear for the past 70 plus years, and they really have made a name for them themselves. They've been the one of the leading players in this audiophile headphone kind of land. So this week I got a chance to spend some quality time with one of their newest products, the Sennheiser IE80SBT. But what's so special about this Bluetooth headband and does it sort of keep in line with the Sennheiser reputation? Well, let's take a closer look with the Sennheiser IE80SBT review. Oh, hey, Steph here. Before getting started into the review, I just want to say a quick thing. If you like this review and you find it really helpful, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we definitely want to try and grow a little bit, so definitely want to hear your feedback as well. So let us know what you think in the comments down below. All right, thanks. I'll see you in the review. Now, as for the IE-80S itself, it has a small, compact kind of size compared to other IEMs in the market now. And it also has a really simple, but still pretty like mature kind of look. It's got this matte gray sort of finish uh, with the sort of aluminum little Sennheiser logo on there. It's lightweight and it fit really easily in my ears. Now there is a silicone ear hook that goes behind the ear. It was a little bit too big for my ears personally, but it still kind of helped to keep it in place. And it was very comfortable. You know, usually I'm not super into neckband designs, but this one did a really good job of just kind of feeling weightless and helping me sort of forget that it's there. Uh, when I was wearing these, yeah, it was just comfortable and fit really well. So I think it will work well for a wide variety of ears as well. And the fact that it comes with a lot of different ear tips, uh, the foam tips and the two flange and the regular silicone means that there's just kind of more options for getting it to fit in your ears and also for sound isolation. Now, as for the drivers of these IEMs, they use dynamic drivers and uh, it also uses a uh, neodymium magnets. Now, the thing that's most interesting about the IE-80S though is the bass adjustment pot here. Now, with this, you can sort of increase the bass, decrease it, sort of try and tune it to your own personal likings in regard to the bass. But the special thing with the Bluetooth version of these IEMs is that now you actually are able to control some of the sound using the Sennheiser Smart Control app. Now with this, you've got a five band EQ, um, so you can sort of even customize the sound even further. It can connect via Bluetooth 5. It also supports Aptex, Aptex LL, so low latency Aptex, so you can watch movies and things like that easily. And LHDC, which is um, trying to be a competitor to Sony's LDAC codec. Very high res codecs that I think a lot of audio files will find very important to have included with this. It has a six hour battery life. There's a remote and microphone on here so that you can talk on the phone and also control playback just straight from the actual neck band. This uses actually a special DAC. This is a dedicated AKM DAC. Um, I tried to do a little research on AKM, but the thing that's most interesting Interesting to me here is that it's dedicated for sound. So it's something that is really trying to preserve the quality. And I think that's where a lot of Bluetooth options really kind of fall short, but Sennheiser has done it here. I will say, I wish that the battery life was a little bit longer. Six hours in today's market of Bluetooth is pretty short. Uh, but that said, you know, I think if you're an audiophile that's really caring about the sound, maybe that's something that you can look past. And if you needed more time, then these probably won't be the right ones for you. But if the six hour battery life doesn't scare you away, let's get into the sound. So first, before talking about the low frequencies, I just want to talk about the bass adjustment tool. Now for this, the listening portion of this review, what I did was turn the bass adjustment tool basically all the way down. And one of the reasons is because it's not detented. Getting both individual ears to be exactly the same isn't super easy. Um, there are little kind of markings, uh, but they're not well marked. You kind of just have to use your ears and there is a little um, kind of graphic in the uh, manual here, but it, it's not a very good graphic and doesn't show you super well like where the placement should be. But when you adjust that knob, 
it really is adjusting a pretty wide range of frequencies. You know, I really noticed it most in sort of the upper bass. So it's not, it sort of can make things a little bit cloudy, but it's also thickens it up and also kind of makes it have like an even, even warmer kind of tonality. So as for the actual sound, there's a boost around 60 hertz. This boost really kind of helps provide punch to kick drums, but overall it's really kind of a warm low end. Now there is a little bit of a sense of expansion, but that kind of expansion actually has a little bit of vagueness to it, but the upper kind of part of the low frequencies did feel more kind of tight and punchy. I was actually pretty impressed with the overall dynamic expression here, especially for something being Bluetooth. The way that the Bluetooth sounded here definitely sounds better than probably any other Bluetooth I've ever heard. The only thing rivaling it really would be the uh, the Biodynamic Amiron Wireless, which had a really good sounding Bluetooth as well. For example, when I was listening to the song I'm Callin' by Tennis, the kick drum and the bass guitar both sounded punchy, they sounded very full, they had a feeling of warmth to them, but the kick drum had a little bit of that sort of expansion I was talking about, but the sustain of that kick then felt a little bit vague, so it wasn't super tight as the kick sort of rang out. As for the middle frequencies of the IE ADS BT, uh, they felt full and super warm, very pleasant and aesthetically pleasing. I noticed a boost around 200 hertz. This really gave just a nice feeling of thickness. But then I also thought that there was a really kind of good feeling of separation between the instruments that had like more predominantly middle mid-range information and those that had more high mid information. There was a little bit of a cut around 2K right at the base of the uh, of the high mids, which I think kind of helped to create that separation. Then I did notice also a boost around four to 5K and that really kind of helped to make things a little bit more present. There's so much warmth there that it actually really needed that presence. The thing that I was most impressed was with was the dynamic expression, how drums and transients and acoustic guitars really had specificity to them that usually gets lost with Bluetooth. For example, when I was listening to the song Thrash Unreal, by Against Me, something I really enjoyed was that the snare drum, the toms all sounded super punchy and they had a, this kind of liveliness to them, this energy to them that was just really fun. The electric guitar sounded nice and big and full, yet they still had clarity in the uh, in the distortion of it, so I could still kind of hear the texture of that distortion. The vocals are shaped in an interesting way. They kind of have a sense of chest to them, and they also have lots of clarity in the mouth, uh, a little bit less detail in the throat of the voice. As for the high frequencies, I noticed two areas of emphasis. One in the upper treble around what sounded like 8K, and one in the upper octave around what sounded like 12K, 13K or so. Now, as a result, um, you get a really nice feeling of texture from percussion, from strings, from voices even, but there was a little bit of a cut around what sounded like 6 or 7k, and what this did was sort of kind of make, uh, give the highs, even though they have lots of information, kind of a feeling of relaxedness. Um, it kind of made the high frequencies as a whole feel a little bit quieter, yet they still had a lot of, you know, high frequency detail. Now, for example, I was listening to the song Kisas 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 by Pink Martini, and in this, the percussion, the shaker, the guiro, the hand drum kind of had this nice feeling of texture to them. There was sort of this inaudible sense of airiness to the vocal. Um, usually, you know, the vocal will come through with more kind of breathiness, and there is breathiness there, but above that, I kind of noticed this extension or this just kind of inaudible lift. I did notice a little bit of sibilance at times with that vocal. Um, listening to other songs and other kind of brighter vocals, I didn't always hear that sibilance, but in this song in particular, I did hear it every once in a while. But overall, the feeling in the high frequencies is less of a thickness and more of kind of a lift, kind of more leaning upward than leaning toward like the thickness of hi-hats or cymbals or anything like that. Now, I was actually super impressed with the sound stage of this, uh, something I really wasn't expecting, but also is a testament to the way the Bluetooth sounds here. As for the left to right kind of feeling, the stereo imaging of it, uh, there's lots of activity there. I really felt nice movement from instruments that are sort of panning back and forth. As for the depth, you know, there is good intimacy and articulation because of that high mid boost, um, but that does contrast really nicely from the things set further back in space. And as for the feeling of height, that low frequency extension I mentioned, regardless of the fact that it was a little bit vague feeling, um, 
definitely contrasted super well from the other kind of the high frequency extension there. The transient response kind of mixed in there left spaciousness and kind of differentiation between where everything was sitting in space. Now, for example, when I was listening to the song Fever by Ray Charles featuring Natalie Cole, there's a really big difference in contrast between the lows of the bass compared to those of the kind of brighter uh, breathier kind of vocals uh, compared then with the cymbals kind of sitting up above. But one of the most impressive pieces in this song with these IEMs was the hand drum, something that I don't know, I was never really super aware of that that hand drum uh, is recorded in stereo. So I could hear kind of the um, the particularities of where the left and right of the hand drum uh, was placed in space with these IEMs, something that I was definitely not expecting from a Bluetooth headset. Now finally, as for the feeling of death, the vocals contrasted really well from the roads and then um, more kind of dramatically was the, the strings in the song which feel really far off in space and I thought that was pretty interesting. I was very impressed with how this was able to handle it. Overall, the Sennheiser IE80 SBT has, has a warmness and a thickness to its sound. It has a very comfortable fit and I was super impressed with the DAC in this, just really kind of preserved a lot of the movement and activity in mixes that makes these one of the best sounding Bluetooth uh, earphones that I've ever heard for sure. Thank you so much for watching. For a closer look at my experience with the Sennheiser IE80 SBT, check out the link down below in the description for a link to the article that I wrote about these IEMs. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. All right, everybody, I will see you next time. Bye.